Hello and welcome to this first look exploring session looking at Medea by Seneca translated uh, out of Latin into English by John Studley uh, in the 1560s off the top of my head actually I haven't double checked precisely what the publishing date for that was but somewhere around 1566 is the number I've got in my head but I could be wrong check the show notes uh, so yes we as ever with Seneca we are going to be reading this pretty much all the way through straight um, because uh, most of our technical criticism will be of the original play rather than necessarily the translation. Uh, so uh, we, we, we give this slightly shorter shrift than we might for some of the other uh, more embedded early modern text, shall we say. Uh, and, you know, content warning. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Latin crossover Greek tragedy thing. It, it's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy if you're um, not keen on, on tragic, horrible deaths. Um, just leave now seriously just 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 walk away <laughs> anyway uh we hopefully will have some more readers coming into the room as we uh we progress uh but starting off uh, the batting today uh reading medea is hello i'm valentina i'm an italian actor and voiceover artist in london uh reading uh various choruses i mean i think it's technically one chorus all the way through but uh, we we had got it split up it may be split up it may not be reading various choruses and possibly other things as well is hello it's tom from brighton uh reading a uh, new tricks uh today is hi i'm rachel actor on the east coast and I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I will be uh, stepping in to read in any additional bits and bobs as we go. And I say we should have uh, entering the room any moment now. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, like like a, a, a wraith in the night to read Creon, uh, Chorus and Nuntius is... Hi, I'm Eric. Um, I just got here. Uh... Yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, and uh, say, so hopefully we we will have additional uh, bodies joining us uh, a little later on. Uh, we'll hopefully make that segue in a, in a beautiful way, almost as, as as smoothly as that segue was, which I, I thought that 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 was almost planned. That almost felt it was it was meant to be. Uh, anyway, um, before the actual tragedy itself starts, there's an argument to the tragedy by the translation uh, translator. So if you don't want to know the score, look away now. Care saw did grip Medea's heart to see her Jason, whom she tendered as her life, and rescued had from plunge of perils free, renouncing her to take another wife. Love spent in vain breeds hate and malice rife, in kindling coals whose heat and greedy flame save streams of blood, naught else can quench the same. Medea mad in troubled mind doth muse on vengeance fell to quit her grievous wrong. Wrath plagues at length intendeth she to use, ill venomous things she charms with charming song, seeks out a bane made of their poison strong, in traitorous gifts a robe and chain of gold nicely she doth the hidden poison fold sent other gifts to cruz and her sire and taking them that bought their dole to pass unware were burnt by means of charmed fire due vengeance yet for jason greater was life first on child by mother's hand alas expired hath which though it him agrees Yet his other child she slays before his eyes. So, with that warning in place as to where this is going, Act One opens with Medea. O oh, gods, whose grace doth guide a ghost that joy in wedlock pure, O oh, Juno, thou Lucina height, on whom the cherry cure allotted ease of those that groan in painful childbed bends. O oh, Pallas, by whose heavenly art Sir Typhus' cunning hands have learned to bridle with his helm his newly framed boat, wherewith, wherewith with the force of fighting floods, he breaking rides afloat. O oh, 
God, whose forked mates doth storm in regal rough appease, and cause the ruffling surges couch amid these ramping seas. O oh, Titan, who upon the swift and whirling hemisphere divides the cheerful day and night by eagle turns to appear. O oh, threefold shapen Hecate, that sendest forth thy light unto thy silent sacrifice that offered is by night, by whom my Jason swore to me, O oh, heavenly powers all, and ye on whom Medea may with safer conscience call, O oh, dungeon dark, most dreadful den of everlasting night, O oh, dampened ghosts, O oh, kingdom set us against the God's right, O oh Lord of sad and lowering lakes, O oh Lady Die of hell, whom though that brutal tale by force yet did his troth excel, the fickle faith of Jason's love that he to me doth bear, with cursed throat I conjure you, O oh, grisly ghosts, appear. Come out, come out, ye early shags, Revenge this deed so dire. Bring in your scratching paws a burning brand of deadly fire. Rise up, you hideous, devilish fiends, as dreadful as you were, when unto me in wedlock state you did sometime appear. Worky, worky the doleful death of this new wedded wife. And martyr ye thy, this father-in-law, deprive of breath and life, King Creon's ruthful family, in plunge of passing pain, torment ye me, that on my spouse do wish this woe to reign, preserves my Jason's life. But yet let him be baited out, a mighty roguing renegade in foreign towns about, to pass from door to door with care to beg his needy bread, not knowing in what harboring place to couch his cursed head, a banished wretch, disdained of all, and still in fear of life, then let him wish ten thousand times for me again his wife. This famous guest whom every man will entertain and have, let him be driven as strangers gate the table crumbs to crave, and that my bitter bannings may with mischief most abound. God grant in gulf of like distress his children may be drowned, to sink in sorrow storms that do their mother overflow. Now, now I have, I have the full revenge of all my woe. I have dispatched my pitches plaint and words in vain I lose. What shall not I with violence get up against my foes and wring out of their rested hands the wedding torch so bright? Shall I not force the ferment to lose his shrinking light? What doth my grandsire's feeble face this heavy hap behold? And standing gazing at his gear, yet westward he's he rolled on glistening chariot hoisted high and keeps his beaten race amid the crystal colored sky. Why turns he not his face, retiring fast into the east, back up the day to twine? Oh, Father Phoebe, to me. To me thy chariot reins resign, that I advanced up about the marble skies may ride, bequeath thy bridle unto me, and give me grace to guide the yoked prancing team with yerking lush of burning whip, that with thy fervent fair fiery beams on purple pole do skip. Let Corinth country burnt to dust by force of flame and fire, give place that both the tumbled seas may join, whom to retire it doth compel, and dasheth off from bank on either side, least meet in one their channels might, whose streams he doth divide. No way to work their deadly woe I have but this hand, that to the wedding I should bear a ruthful bridal brand unknowing Creon's careless court. When finished I have such solemn service as that the rite of sacrifice doth grave, that at the altars of the gods my children shall be slain, with crimson colored blood of babes their altars will I stain. Through livers, lungs, 
the lights and heart through every gut and goal for vengeance break away perforce and spare no blood at all if any lusty life as yet within thy soul do rest if aught of ancient courage still do dwell within my breast exile all foolish female fear and pity from thy mind and as the untamed tigers use the rage and rave unkind the that haunt the croaking cumbrous caves and clumpered frozen clives and craggy rocks of caucasus whose bitter cold deprives the soil of all inhabitants permit to lodge and rest such savage brutish tyranny within thy brazen breast whatever hurly burly brought doth phases understand what mighty monstrous blood feet i wrote to by sea or land the like in corinth shall be seen in most outrageous guise most hideous hateful horrible to hear or see with eyes most devilish desperate dreadful deed yet never known before whose rage shall force heaven earth and hell to quake and tremble so my burning breast that rolls in wrath and doth in rancor boil so thirsteth, thirsteth after blood and wounds with slaughter death and spoil but renting wrecked limbs from limbs to drive them down to grave tush these be but a flea bitings that i mention have as weighty things as these I did in greener girlish age. Now sorrow's smart doth rub the gall and frets with sharper rage. But as if my womb hath yielded fruit, it doth me well behove the strength and parlous puissance of weighter ills to prove. Be ready, wrath with all thy might that fury kindle may thy foes to their destruction be ready to assay of thy divorcement let thy price to match and counterpace the proud and precious princely pomp of these new wedding days how will thou from thy spouse depart has him thou fallest hast in blood to bathe thy bloody hands and traitor's life to waste Break of in time these long delays, abandon now again this lewd alliance got by guilt, with greater guilt refrain. And we go to the chorus, altered by the translator. Tom, could I ask you to read the chorus to close Act One, please? Who hath not wished that windy words in be vain? And that in talk of trust is not the ground. Here in a mirror may see it plain. Me, Medea, so by proof the same hath found, who being blind by blinded Venus boy, her bleary eyes could not behold her bliss, nor spy the present poison by her joy, while in the grass the serpent lurked is. The shaft that flew from Cupid's golden bow with feathers so hath dimmed her dazzling eyes that cannot see to shun the way of woe. The rankling head is dented heart that lies. So dulls the same that cannot understand the cause that brought false Jason out of Greece to come unto her father's fertile land is not her love, but the love of the golden fleece. Yet was this speech so pleasant and so mild, his tongue so filled with promises so fair, sweet was the flowers, flower song that hath beguiled, and silly bird brought to the limited snare. Faith in his face, trust shined in his eyes, the blushing brown plain meeting seemed to show. In double heart, in double heart black treason lies, dissembling thoughts that weave the web of woe, the honeyed lips, the tongue in sugar dip. Though sweet the poison rank with present within the breast, 
Its subtle show of painted sheath is kept, the rusty knife of treason deemed least. Life seem the bait to fight that lieth brim, death is the hook that underlies the same. The candle blaze delights with burning trim, the fly till she be burned in the flame. Who is such shows least dimmed any ills? The hungry fish fears not the bait to brook, till up the line do pluck him by the gills. And last in throat he feels the deadly hook. Woe, Jason, woe to thee, most wretched man, or rather, wretch, my dear, woe to thee. Woe to the one that thus dissembled can, woe to the other that trained so might be. Though, though my dear, his eyes to be the glass, wherein you might the face of thought behold, that in his breast with words so covered was, as cankered brass with glass, with gloss of yellow gold. Did thou, did thou suppose that native, more than kind, had placed his heart, his lying lips between, his looks to be the mirror of his mind, Faith in fair face hath seldom yet been seen. Who listens to the flattering mermaid's note must need commit his tired eyes to sleep, yielding to her the talking, taking of the boat that means unaware to drown him in the deep. What booth thee, Medina, to betray the golden sleep fleece to fawning Jason's hand from dragon's teeth with safety to convey and fiery bulls that wander of the land. Why of this sake for father hast thou fled and trust thyself out from thy native soil? Thy brother's blood was allied thee to shed with Jason thus to travel and toil. Behold the meed of his tiny good desert, the recompense that he to thee doth give. For pleasure, pain, for joy, most eager smart, with clogging cares and banishments to live. Thou, thy, and thy babes are like to beg and starve in nations strange, O miserable life. While Jason from his promises do swerve and, and takes delight in his new wedded wife. O oh, ground and great, and when he has, and when the husband man hath tilled it to recom recompense his toil, no corn but weeds and thistles render can to stinge his hands that fruit to seek his soil. Such venom grows of pleasant colored flower. Lo, prince, lo, that deadly poison sup of bane erst sweet, now turned into sour. Medea drank out of the golden cup. Act two Medea and Nutrix. Hi, me. Alas, I am undone. For at the bridal cheer, the warble note of wedding song resounded in my ear. Yet, for all this scant I myself, yet a scant believe I can, that Jason would play such a prank as most unthankful men, both of my country and my sire, and kingdom me to spoil, and yet forsake me wretch forlorn to stray in foreign soil. Oh, hath he such a stony heart that doth not more esteem the great goods turns and benefits that I employed on him. Who knows that I have lewdly used enchantments for his sake, the regal rough and stormy rage of swelling seas to slake, the granting fiery foaming bulls whose smoking guts were stuffed with smoldering fumes that from their jaws and nostrils out they puffed. I stopped 
the nursing munching mouths. I quench the burning breath and vapors hot of stewing pounch that else had wrought his death. Oh, feeds he does his fancy font to think my skill of charm abated his, and that I have no power to do him harm. The strokes of wits, with wavering mind, perplexed on every part, I tossed and tumult am with wayward crazy heart. Now this, now that, and neither now, but now another way. By diverse means I toil that so my wrong revenge I may. I would the wretch a brother had. But what? He hath a wife. Go cut her throat with ghastly wounds, bereave her of her life. On her I'll work my deadly spite. Her, her alone I crave to quit such bitter sousing storms as I sustain have. If any ground notorious guilt in all Pelesca land be put in practice yet unknown unto thy harm in hand, thereof to get experience the time doth now begin. Thy former feats do bid thee take good hope to thrive herein. Let all thy guilds with thronging thick assemble thee to aid the golden fleece, the chief novel of Colchis Isle betrayed, my tender brother, a heck that with my sire did me pursue, whom with his secret parts cut off, I wicked virgins loo, whose shredded and dismembered corpse with sword in gobbets hued, a woeful cause to the father's heart, on Pontus' ground I strewed. How hoary headed Peleus with his withered age to shift to greener ear for longer life. His daughters, by my drift, his members all and mangled fresh with liquor scalding hot eye sodden and purboiled have in seeding brazen pot. How oft in heinous blood have these my cruel hands been dyed? And never any guilt as yet by wrath inflamed I tried. But now the parlous poisoning wound of Cupid's piercing dart doth boil and rage within my breast. It rankles at my heart. But how could Jason it redress, whom fortune's forward will have yield unto another's hand at last to save or spill? Oh, rage of rusty cankered mind, this lander's talk amend. If fortune grace will grant it thus, let him unto his hand live still, my Jason, as he was. But if not Jason mine, yet caitiff suffered Jason live. Though Jason none of thine, who being mindful still of hers, some favour let him show, for these good turns that our goodwill could erst on him bestow, King Creon is in all the fault and only worthy blame, who puffed up with a scepter proud, unable for to frame his fickle mind to modesty, made breach twixt us again, whom Hymen spends and link of love had made but one of twain, by whom ache from her tender brats the mother, wretch, is drawn, he breaks the vow that gagged is with such precious bone. Seek after such a villain's blood in daunting pangs of smart, let him alone be surely doused, such is his due desert, a dungeon hept of cinders burnt his palace make a shell, that Medea where in winding straits the lingering ships to crawl shall gaze on smouldering turrets, tops to molding crackling flame. For God's sake, madame, how you pray your tongue to silence frame. Ick hide your privy languishing in grief and secret pain. Who with a modest mind abides the spurs of pricking pain and suffereth sorrows patiently, may it repay again. Who bears a privy grudge in breast and keeps his malice close when least suspicion is thereof may most annoy his foes. He leaseth opportunity who vengeance doth require that shows by open sparks the flame the heat of kindled fire. Small is the gripe of grief that can to reason's law obey and sneaking down with stealing steps can slyly slip away. 
but they that are thoroughly soused are with or sourced are with showers of greater pain, cannot digest such courses sharp, but cast it up again. Fain would I give them trounting girds. Good daughter, dear, assuage thy unbridled sway. In boiling heat of this thy giddy rage, scant mayst thou purchase quietness, although, although thou hold thy tongue. The violent heart, dame fortune, yet does never never harm with wrong, but that in dusters down she drives. If any courage dure, and harbored, in, and harbored be in noble breast, now put the same in err. The show of sturdy valiant heart at any time doth shine. No hope doth in adversity thy way to scape a sign. He that hath none affluence left, nor any hope at all, yet let him not mistrust the luck of aught that may befall. Thy country clean hath cast thee off, to let thee sink or swim. As for thy husband Jason be, there is no trust in him. Of all the wealth and worldly muck wherewith thou didst abound, no portion remains at all, whereby some help is found. Medea yet is left too much. And here thou mayst spy the seas to succor us in flight and lens aloof that lie. Yeah, iron tools with burning brands, we have to work them woe. And gods that with their thunder dint shall overquell our foe. Who wears the golden crested crown, him dread with all ye should. My father was a king, yet I betrayed his fleece of gold. Cannot the deadly violence of weapons make thee fear? No, though such grisly lads they were, as Willem did appear, that bred of gargled dragon's teeth in hollow gaping ground, when mutually in blood fight each other did confound. And wilt thou cast thyself to death? Would God, yea, I were dead. Fly, fly to save thy life. Woe worth the time that once I fled. But who, oh, my dear? Why shall I fly? Mother dear thou art. Mother dear art thou. Fly therefore for thy children's sake. You see by whom and how. A wretched mother I am made. Thy life by flight to save dost thou mistrust. Nay, fly I will, but vengeance first I'll have. Then some shall thee at heels pursue, to wreak the same again. Perhaps I'll make his coming short. Be still, and now refrain, O desperate dame, thy thundering threats, and slake your raging ire. Apply, and frame thy froward will as time and tides require. Full well my fortune's wealth in wheel to beg and bring my estate, as for my worthy courage that she never shall abate. Who bouncing at the gates doth cause the creaking doors to jars? Is it the wretch Creon himself, whom princely power far hath lift aloft with lordly look, puffed up with pouncing pride, that he may Corinth's country with the sway of scepter guide? Indeed, enter Creon. Medea, that ungracious imp, King Aetes, wicked child, yet hath not from our careful realm her lingering foot exiled. Some naughty drift she goes about her knacks of old we know, her juggling arts, her harming hands are known well long ago. From whom will she withhold her harm? Whom will this cruel beast permit to live from peril free in quietness and rest? Clean to cut off this parlous plague, it was our purpose to our purpose met, bent. But Jason, by entreating hard, cause us to relent. At his request, we granted to have her life, she shall enjoy. Let her quit her country free from fear of all annoy. Yea, safely let her pack her hence. In eager giddy fit, with lumpish lowering look, she comes in talk with me to knit. 
so as keep her off and set her hands lest she touch perhaps, and drive her back from coming nigh, commander her, keep her clap, and let her learn at length how that she that herself she submit she may. The puissant pays and majesty of princes to obey. Run, hide thee quickly, trudge apace, have hence out of my sight this horrible, most odious queen, this monstrous wicked white. My sovereign liege, what greater crime have I or less offence commit against thy majesty to be exiled hence? Alas, the guiltless woman doth demand a reason why. If thou be judge indifferent, ordained my cause to try, consider then my doubtful case and weigh the ground of it. If thou be king, command a judge for such a matter fit. The prince's power thou shalt obey, be it either right or wrong. The prosperous pride of wronging crowns cannot endure long. A vaunt in and yell out thy complaints at caucus, get thee hence. All gladly will I get me home, if he that brought me thence vouchsafe to bear me back again. Alas, too late arise, entreating words when as decree is taken otherwise. He that not hearing either part pronounceth his decree, and righteous men are come to his, though right his sentence be. While Peleus trusted to thy talk from life to death he fell. Go to, begin, we'll give you your leave, your goodly tale to tell. That type of regal majesty that erst by fortune's hand advanced to I did attain, hath taught me to understand how hard a thing it is of wrath the rigor to assuage. When burning heat of boiling breast in flames begins to rage, Eck for the advancement of her their power more to display in sight, their kingly courage bolstered out with majesty of might. They deem it doth import as way, and hath a greater grace, whom stately scepter caused to climb aloft to prouder place, to persevere with fancy fond in that to reason spite, whose greedy choice attained first his mind with vain delight. For though in beaches flight I lie, thrown down to great decay, with heavy hap and ruthful chance to miserably stay, thus haunted out from place to place forsook and left alone, a widow while my husband lived, with cause to wail and moan, perplexed in maze of misery, with clawing cares so rife, yet will him, I in golden throne have led in happy life. By high and noble parentage, my brow to renown doth shine. From feeble stake, my grandsire great derived is my line. Where silver stream faces flood, his washing waves doth shed, or with contrary cronking ways, his bathing channel spread. Whatever wandering coast stretched out is left aloof behind. From whence the Roman Scythian sea, his channel forth doth find, where as Maeotis fenny plash with pure fresh water springs, doth season sweet the briny sea that tide in thither brings. Ec all the coasts environed and kept within the banks of Thermodon, where warlike troops and armed widows' ranks with painted bucklers on their arms hold all the land in fear, with the rigor rough of threatening sword, with force of denting spear. So far, to all these wandering coasts and countries round about, my father ample regiment at large is stretched out. I, being thus of noble race, and in an happy plight, with glorious gloss of princely pomp in honor shining bright, then peerless peers my spousal bed did seek and sue to have. But who does but those to be their loving fears now other ladies crave, rush, fickle, Thievish, undiscreet, and wavering fortune's will hath cast me out the crushing cares of banishment to fill. In scepter proud and haughty crown fix thine aff affiance fast. Sith upside down with a welkin wheel, while whole mounts of wealth is cast. These princes 
do possess, that should the royalty display, whose fame shall never raised be, with storm or lowering day to succor those whom misery in pit of pains doth source, to shield and harbor suppliants in roof for royal house. This only brought I from my realm, the precious golden fleece, that jewel chief and egg the flower of chivalry in Greece, the sturdy prop, the rumter strong, the bulwark of your wealth. And Hercules, the boisterous imp of Jove, I kept in health. It was by means of my good will that Orpheus did escape, whose harmony the lifeless rocks with such delight did rape, that forced even the clotted lumps with hobbling pricked to prance, and ache the yokened nodding woods with footing fine to dance, and that these heavenly twins Castor and Pollux did not die, my due desert is doubled twice, since them preserved I, Emborus, blustering out with puffed cheeks, his blasting breath, his winged sons, I kept alive both Calais and Zeph. And Lysens, Lysens, that with piercing beams and sharper sight of eye could navies on the farther bank of Sicil shore espy, and all the minions that did come the golden fleece to win, as for the prince of princes all, I will not bring him in. With silence, Jason, will I pass, for whom though him I save, yet is not Greece in depth to me, no recompense I crave. To no man him I do impute, the rest I brought again for your avail, that you thereby some profit might attain. But only on my Jason dear, him for my own love's sake, I kept in store that he of me his wedded wife should make. None other fault, God what, ye have to charge me with, but this, that Argo ship by means of me returned safely is. If I, a shamefast maid, had not with Cupid's bait been caught, if more my father's health to have than Jason's hired sought, Pelasaga land had been undone, and feigned to great decay, the lusty valiant capitains had cleaned, been cast away, and jolly Jason first of all, this now thy son-in-law, the bulls had rent his swallowed limbs in fiery chomping joe. Let fortune fight against my case, as least her elvish will. Yet never shall it grieve my heart. Repent may deed I kneel, that I should for so many kings their reline honour save. The garden do that I, for this my crime commit must have, it lieth Creon in thy hand. If thus it like thee, condemn my guilt goes to death, but render first to me my fault that forced me offend. Then Creon grant I this, receiving Jason cause of crime, I guilty did amiss. Thou knowest that I was such an one when cowering low I lay before thy feet in humble wise and did entreat in pray thy gracious goodness me to grant some succor at thy end. For me, a wretch and wretched babes, I ask within this land some cottage base in outcast hall, some couching corner vile, if from the town thou drive us out to wander in exile, then some by place aloof within this realm let us obtain. How oh, am I none that turn like with churlish scepter reign, nor proudly or disdainfully, with haughty courage high, with vaunting foot do stamp them down that under trodden lie, and daunted are in careful bail this plainly doth disclose, in that to me of late I such an son-in-law hath chose, who was a will wandering pilgrim poor with sore afflictions fraught, this made with terror of his foe that lay for him in wait, because Acastus having got the crown of Thessalian land, requiteth in thy guilty blood to bathe his breakful hand. He doth bewail that good old man, his feeble father slain, whom weight of years with bowing back to stoop of our constraint the godly minded sisters, 
all the blind with misty veil and cloak and color of thy craft durst venturously assail. That mount of mischief marvelous to mangle hue and cut their father's dear unjointed limbs in boiling cauldron put. But for thy open guiltiness, if thou can purge the same, straight Jason can discharge himself from blot of guilty blame. His gentle hands were never stained with gore of any blood. Aloof from your conspiracy, refraining far he stood, his harmless hands put not in your with gory tools to meld. But thou that settest on fire first, these mighty mischiefs fell. Whom shameless woman's wily brain and manly stomach stout do set a god for to attempt to bring all, all ills about, and no regard at all thou hast. How sounding trump of fame with bringing blast of good or ill do blow abroad thy name. Get out and cleanse my filed realm. Away together bear thine herbs my unmild of sorcery, my lieges rid for fear. Transport thee to some other land, whereas thou may at ease with odious noise of devilish charm the trouble God's disease. If needs thou wilt have me avoid my ship to me restore, or else my mate with whom I first arrived on this shore, why dost thou bid that by myself I only should be gone? I came not hither at first without my company alone. If these do thee aggrieve, that brunt of wars thou shalt sustain, command us both the cause thereof to shun thy realm again. As if both are guilty of one art, where dost thou part us twain? For Jason's sake, not for mine own, poor Peleus was slain. Annex unto my traitor's flight to conquered booty brave, my hoary-headed natural sire, whom I forsaken have with brother's bloody flesh that mangled was with carving knife or aught of Jason's forged lies he gabs unto his wife. These dreaded these dreary deeds are none of mine, so oft as I offend, not for my own commodity to come thereby in the end. Time is expired, by which thou ought to have been gone away. Why, with keeping such chat, why dost thou make so long delay? Yet of thy bounty ere I go, this one boon will I crave. Although the mother banished, so sore offended have, let not the vengeance of my fall through wrathful, deathly hate mine innocent and guiltless babe torment in wretched state. Away. With loving, friendly gripe, thy children I embrace, and as a father natural take pity on their case. Even for the prosperous good increase of fertile spousal bed, of clones bright by thy daughter dear, whom Jason late hath wed, and by the hope of fruitful seed, whose flower in time shall bloom. By the honour of thy glistering crown, I thralled to fortune's doom, which she, so full of chop and change, with fickle turning wheel, wills up and down, in staggering state, makes to and fro to reel. I do beseech, Sith, to exile, I am the party now, O oh, Crayon. But a little pause for mercy me allow, while of my morning breaths with kiss my last farewell I take, while gasp of failing breath perhaps my shivering limbs forsake. With craft intending some deceit thou cravest this delay. What falsehood for so little time because of terror may? No jot of time is short enough displeasure to prevent. And not one jot to weeping eyes and thrilling tears be lent? Although against thy earnest suit unlucky dread do strive, one day to settle thee away, content I am to give. This is too much, and of the same somewhat a bridge we may. Make speed apace, if from our land thou get thee not away, ere Phoebus' horse with golden gleed their streaming beams do shed. Of dawning lamp thou art condemned to lease thy wretched head. Head. The holy day and bridal both do call me hence away, and will me at the sacred air of Hymenius to pray. Lavish of life and dreadless was the, way, the white, 
attempting first in slender tottering barge with slung, slung o'er the sliced wave to smite and durst commit the dainty, dainty tender charge of hazard life to innocent course of wind that turns with change of chance evermore to view the land forsook aloof behind the shroving forth the ship for safer shore and glancing through the foamy channel deep on sunder cut with slender stem the wave twixt hope of life and dread of dead to death to sweep in narrow gut himself to spill or save experience yet of planets no man had they need not the wandering course to know of stars wherewith the painted sky is clad not Pelides, which return of sailing show nor hyadas that with showers the sea do beat no not the stern amatheus horned head who gave the lips of sucking jove the teat where one to put the blundering ships is dread in dread they feared not the northern icy wane which lazily old boots wheeled behind and twines about no name yet could they feign for burrus rough no smoother western wind Yet Typhus bold on empty seas to show his hoisted sail and from and for the wind's decree new laws as now the full gale aloof do blow. Now tackle turn to take side side wind a lee, now up to furl the cross sail on the mast. There safe to hang the topsail now to spread now missile sail and drabbler out to cast when daggling hangs his stottering tackle red while steermen steer and busy never blin with pith to pull all sails eek to display with tooth and nail or force of wind to win to shear the seas and quick to scud away the golden world our fathers have possessed where banished fraud dost never never come in place all were content to live at home in rest with hoary head gray beards and furrowed face which tract of time within his country brought rich having little for more they did not toil, nor vent for wares, nor traffic far they sought. No wealth that sprang beyond their native soil, a thessal ship together now hath set. The world that well with seas deserving lay, in bids the floods with oars to be bet. And streams unknown with shipwreck us to fray, that wicked keel was lost by rueful rack. I tossed through such perils passing great, where cyan rocks can roar and thunder cracked, whose bouncing bolt the shaken soil doth beat, the scourging surge doth every star, the pestered seas, the clouds aloft beray. The scuffling did told bold Typhus do detar. His helm did slip from trembling hand dismay. Then Orpheus with drooping harp was mum, dead in her dumps the flaunting Argos glee, all hussed in rest with silenced waxed dumb. What hearty heart astounded there would not be to see at once each yawning mouth to gape a skyless gulf compact in wallowing paunch of dogs who doth no loathe their mongrel shape her visage breast and hideous ugly haunch who eketh not the skirdle with barking still to hear the mermaid's dire do 
doth not quail, that lure the ears with pleasant singing shrill, of such as Astolus see do sail, when Orpheus of his twanging harp did play, that erst the muse Calop gave to him, almost those num nymphs that wanted was to stay. The ships he caused fast following him to swim, how dearly was the wicked journey brought. Medea accursed, and Eric the golden fleeced, that greater harm than storm of seas hath wrought. Rewarded well that voyage first of Greece, now seas control to suffer passage free. The Argo, proud, erect by hand of Pallas first, doth not complain that she, conveyed, hath back the kings unto their land. Each whirly boat now scuds about the deep. All stints of war are taken clean away. The cities frame new walls themselves to keep. The open worlds let naught rest where it lay. The hoys of in Agdric's lukewarm leak, the Persians stout in rain and outless stream doth bathe their barks. Time shall in fine outbreak, when ocean wave will sh shall open every realm, and wandering world at will shall open lie and Typhus will some found land survey. Some travellers shall the countries far escry beyond small tool known furthest at this day. And we go into Act 3, Nutrix and Medea, and later on Jason will enter. Why trotst thou fisking in and out so rash from place to place? Stand still and of thine eager wrath suppress the ruthful race. The rigor rough of ramping rage from burning breast outcast, as Bacchus Bedlam priests that of his sprite have felt to the blast, run frantic, pointing up and down with skittish wayward wits, not knowing any place of rest, so pricked with froward fits, on cloudy top of Pindus mount all hid with snow so chill, or else upon the lofty ridge of branched Nissa Hill, thus starting still with frownst mind, she walters to and fro. The signs pronouncing proof of pangs, her frenzy face doth show with glowing cheeks, and blood red face with short and gasping breath. She fetcheth deep ascending sighs from sobbing heart beneath. Now blithe she smiles. Each rumbled thought in pondering brain she beats. Now stands she in a mammering. Now mischief sore she threats. With chafing foom she burns in wrath. And now she doth complain. With blubbering tears a fresh by live she weeps and wails again. Where will this lumpish load of cares with headlong sway alight? On whom intendeth she to work the threats of her despite? Or will this huge tempestuous surge slake down itself again? Enkindled fury new in breast begins to boil amain. She secretly intends no mischief small nor mean of life to pass herself in wickedness her busy brains devise. The token old of pinching eye or full well air this no eye. Some heinous, huge, Outrageous great, and dreadful storm is nigh, her fiery, scowling, steaming eyes, her hanging groin I see. Her pouting, puffed, frowning face, that signs of fretting be. Almighty Jove, beguile my fear. Oh, wretch, if thou desire. What measure ought to appease thy wrath than learn by Cupid's fire to hate as sore as thou didst love? Shall I not them annoy that do unite in spousal bed their wanton lusts to enjoy? Shall Phoebus' fiery-footed horse go lodge in western wave the drooping day 
the, that late I did with humble crouching crave and with such earnest busy suit so hardly granted was. Shall it depart ere I can bring my devilish durst to pass? While hovering heaven doth come to poised hang with eagle space amid the marble hemispheres, while round with a stinted race, the gorgeous sky above the earth does spin and roll about, whilst that the number of the sands lies hid unsearched out, while dawning day doth keep his course with Phoebus blaze so bright, while twinkling stars in golden trains do guard the slumbery night, while isle under propping pole with whirling swings so swift, the shining bears unbathed about the frozen sky do lift, while flushing floods the frothy steams to rustling seas do send to gird them crypt with plonging pangs my rage shall never end with greater heat it shall reboil like as the brutish beast whose tyranny most horrible exceedeth all the rest what greedy gaping whirlpool wide what Parlos gulf and mind what scylla couched in roaring rocks or what Charbed is wild that Sicil and Yonium sea by frothy wave doth sup. What Etna bulking stifling flames and dusky vapors up, whose heavy pace with stir stewing heat doth smoldering crush beneath ensolates that fiery flakes from choked throat doth breath, can with such dreadful menaces in switching fury fry. No river swift nor troubled surge of stormy seas so high, nor sturdy seas whom ruffling winds with raging force to roar, nor puissant flesh of fire whose might by boisterous blast is more may bide my anger's violence. My fury shall it foil, his court I'll overhaul and lay it level with the soil. My Jason's heart did quake for fear of Creon Clure cruel king, and least the king of Thessaly would war upon him bring. But loyal love that hardens heart makes no man be afraid. Be but, uh, but be it that he convict hath yield himself to Creon's might, yet once he might have visited and come to me his wife to talk and take his last farewell, if danger of his life in doing this hard hearted wretch most cruel he shall fear he being creon's son in low for him it lethal were to have prorogued somewhat yet my heavy banishment to take my leave of children twain one only day is lent yet do i not complain as though the time to short i thought as proof shall plain pronounce today today it shall be wrought, the memory whereof no tract of time shall wipe away. With malice spent against the gods, my wrath shall them assay, and rifling everything, both good and bad, I will turmoil. Madame, thy mind that troubled is, and tossed with such a brill of swarming ills, Thy vexed breast now set at rest again, thy peevish affection all of troubled mind refrain. Then only can I be at rest, when everything I see thrown headlong topsy-turvy down to ruthful end with me. With me let all things clean decay, thyself if thou dost spill, thou mayst drive to destruction what else with thee thou will. It in this folly stiff thou stand, behold what after claps are to be feared. None dare contrive for princes training traps. O oh, luckless lot of froward fates, O oh, cruel fortune's hap, both when she list a smite or spare in woe she doth us wrap alike the salve that God hath given so oft to cure our grief, more noyeth than the sore itself, and sendeth less relief. If for her good deserts, oh me, amendment I should make, I hazard should my venturous life to lease it for her sake. If I will shun my dismal day, and will not for her die, then want the love of loyalty, oh wretched man must I, 
No dastards dread my stomach. Stout can cause to droop and shrink, but mere remorse appalleth me when on my babes I think. For why? When pe careful parents are once reft of life and breath, some after them their wretched seed are drawn to doleful death. O oh, sacred righteousness, if thou enjoy thy worthy place in perfect bliss of happy heaven, I call upon thy grace, and thee for witness here allege, how for my children's part, with pity pricked, I have commit these things against my heart. And so I think Medea herself the mother rather had, though frantically as now she fares with rage of heart so mad, and doth abhor with painful yoke of cumbrous cares to toil her spousal bed, than that her seed should take the plunging foil. I did determine in my mind to go to her entreat with gentle words, and pray her cease in fervent wrath to freet and low on me, when once she cast the beams of glancing eye, Full blithe she leaps, she jumps for joy, in fuss she gins to fry. Deep blackish hate she seems in outward rare, brow to bear, and wholly in her frowning face doth glutting grief appear. I buck in, buck in Jason M. This still to chop and change the flitting soul of my abode, to me it is not strange. The cause of my departure yet, to me, is strange and new. I wanted was in following thee all places to askew. I will depart and get me hence. To whom for helping hand intendest thou to send us forth, whom hence to fly the land thou dost compel with thine allies? Shall I repair again to Faces' flood, to Colchis' isle, or to my father's reign? O oh, gory sweet, sweet in fields, that my, with my brother's blood do reek. What arboring land aloof dost thou command us to seek? What seas appointed ye me to pass? Shall I my journey drive upon the parlous hateful joes of Pontus to arrive, by which I did safe conduct home kings, valiant armies great, where roaring rocks with thundering noise the flapping waves to beat, or on the narrow rackful shore of Simplegades twain, or else to small Kyolkos town? Can I return again? Or toil the gladsome, pleasant lands of Temptain. All places that I opened have unto thy passage free. I shut them up against myself. Now whither sends thou me? A banished wretch to banishment thou wouldst have incline, yet to the place of her exile thou cannot not her assign. Yet, for all that without delay I must depart and go, and why? Forsooth the king his son-in-law commandeth so. Well, nothing will I stand against with gripes of passing pain. Let me be scourged of my deserts, such is the gotten gain. Let Creon in his princely rough lay to his heavy hands to whip and whore in torments sharp, with iron gifts and bends, let her be chained in hideous hall of night, for I her lock. Let her be cloyed with pestering pace of restless rolling rock. Yet, less than I deserve have, in all this shall I find, oh, thou. Uncourteous gentlemen, consider in their mind the flamy puffs and fiery gasps of ghastly gaping bull, and eaters cattle rich with fleece of gorgeous golden wool that went to graze amid so great and mighty fields in field of uncontrolled nation whose soil doth armies yield. Revoke to mind the deadly darts of sudden starting foe, when ghastly warriors, tell us brood, to ground again did go, through slaughter red of neutral lands, to this yet further pass, the large fleece of Freyk's ram, that all then errant was, and Agsom Argus slumberless, whom fast I caused to keep his weary watching winking eyes with unquainted sleep, my brother Eck, whose fatal twist of feeble life I shred, and guilt that wrought so many guilds when as with thee I fled. 
the daughters whom I set on work and trapped in wily train to slay their sire, that shall not rise to quickened life again. And how to travel other realms, I set mine own to naught. By that good hope which of thy seed conceived is in thought, act by thy stable mention place and mighty monsters, that down beaten for thy health, I caused before thy feet to squat, and by these drudging hands of mine, unspared for thy sake, for dread and dangers, overpass that caused thee to quake by heavens above and seas below that witness bearers be to knitting of our marriage up. Thy mercy veil to me. Of all the heaps of treasure great, so far of being fat, which eight as savage Scythians did travel for to get from Ind, where Phoebus scorching blaze doth dye the people black. Of all this gold, which in our dowers we could not well compact, but trick and trim we garnished our groves with gold so gay, I banished wretch of all this stuff got naught with me away, except my brother's slaughtered fresh. Yet I employ the same on thee, the cares of country's health, my honesty and shame. My father and my brother both have yielded place to thee. This is a dowry that thou had my wedded spouse to be. To her whom thou dost abrogate, restore her goods again. When Creon in malicious mood had thought thee to have slain, entreated with my tears, exile and life he gave to thee. I took it for a punishment, but surely as I see, this punishment is now become a friendly good reward. While thou hast time to go, be gone, for most severe and hard the king's displeasure ever is. Thou wouldst thou, oh, thus wouldst thou dodge me out? Thy hated trial cast thou dost, that please Creus thou mot. Dost thou, my dear, upbraid me with a breach of unkind love? And slaughter vile with the treachery whereto thou didst me move. When all is done, what canst thou say my guiltiness to stain? Even whatsoever I have done. Yet more this doth remain, that thy ungracious wickedness of harm should me accuse. Thine, thine, they are, they are all thine, whatever I did use. Who that of lewdness reap is the fruit, is grafter of the same. Let every one with infamy their wretched spouse defame. Yet do thou only take her part, her only do thou call a just and undefiled right, without offence at all. If any man shall for thy sake pollute his hand with ill, to thee let him an innocent yet be accompted still. The life is loathsome to the, that of were his shame who hath it chose. The life whose choice doth work thy shame, thou ought again to lose. Let reason rule thy eager mind, so vexed with crabbed ire, and for thy tender children's ease to be at rest require. I do defy it. Holy, I detest it. I forswear that brethren bred unto my banes, Croesus' womb shall bear. It will be trim, when as a queen of majesty and might hath issue kin unto the seed of thee a banish white. So oh, cursed day shall never on my wretched children shine to mingle baseborn bastards with the blood of noble line. Shall Phoebus stock that bears the lump of heaven in starry throne be matched with drudging Sisyphus that rolls in hell the stone? What means thou wretch both thee and me in banishment to yoke? I pray then hence. When humbly I my mind to Creon broke, he gave an ear unto my suit. What lieth in my might to do for thee? If no good turn, then do thy worst of the spite. On this with his sword in hand, King Creon doth me scar. On other part with armed host, Achas doth me deter. Medea, ek to cope with these, that more appeal, appall as may, go to. To skirmish let us fall, let Jason be the prey. I yield, whom sore adversities have tied with heavy sway. Learn thou to dread thy luckless lot that oft the doth thee dissay. I evermore have ruled the swing of fortune's wavering will. Acastus is at hand, and nigh is Creon thee to spill. 
take thou thy heels to escape them both. I do not of the advice that thou against thy father-in-law in traitor's arms should rise, nor in Acas thy cousin's blood thy wounding hands to go, the vows unto Medea's maid, do trouble thee so sore, while yet thou hast not spilled their blood, yet fly with me away. When armies twain their banners of defiance shall display, and marching forth in field to fight, seek battle at my hand, who then for us encounters shall their puissance to withstand? If Creon and Acastus king and come together shall, admit that these in one with them should join their power all, my countrymen of Colchis Isle and Ata's lusty king, suppose the Scythian join with Greeks to ground, I will them bring clean put to foil. The puissant power of haughty mace, I fear. Take heed, least more thou do affect the same than for to clear thyself of Creon's servile yoke. Lest some suspicion grow of this our tattling long here, let us make an end and go. Now, Job, hurl out thy flames and force thy thundering bolts to fly with fairy drakes, bright brandishing disperses in burning sky stray forth thy dreadful threatening arm dispose in due array the rossing dint of lighting flesh that wreck our quarrel may with rumbling cluck, crack of renting cloud cause all the world to cake and level not thy hovering hand to strike with fiery flake upon my paged and crushed corpse or jason's carcass lane for whether of us thou smite to death his due reward shall gain, thy thumbs of trucking bolts on us amiss they cannot light. Fie, let thy mind on matters run that seem a modest wight, and use to have more cheerful talk if anything thou crave, within my father's house to ease thy flight, thou shalt it have. Thou knowst my mind both can, and ache is want to do no less, than to contemn the brittle wealth that princes do possess this. This shall be only boon that at thy hand I crave, as mates with me in banishment my children let me have, that resting on the sighing breasts my careful morning head, I may my crystal teary streams into their bosoms shed. But as for thee, new gotten sons of wife, new wed to stay. I grant that unto thy request I wish I might obey, but nature me with pretty pricks that needs I must deny. For though Creon and Acast in torments force me lie, I could not yield unto their wills, on this my life doth rest. In times of tears this is the joy of dull afflicted breast, for Better far I can abide the want of vital breath and succour of my limbs, or loose the light of world by death. What love unto his seely babes is deeply graft in him? This worketh well, I have him tripped. Lo, now there lieth brim, an open place whereby receive a venny soon he may. Let me, or I, depart unto my seely children say. These lessons of my last adieu, and grant to me the space, with tender gripe of calling last the loving limbs to embrace. This will be comfort to my heart. Yet at the latter word I ask no more, but only that you should me these afford. I, if eager anguish cause my tongue to cast out words unkind, let all things fly. Let nothing be engraved in your mind, but let remembrance other while of me to touch your thought, let other things be wiped away that bile of wrath I wrought. I have forgotten every wit. God grant thou may off slake. These surging qualms of frounced mind and milder mayest it make, for quietness doth work their ease that dented are with woe. What? This is lily slipped and gone. Falls out of the matter so. Oh, Jason, dost thou sneak away, not having mind of me, nor of those former great good turns that I have done for thee? With thee now am I clean forgot. But I will bring about that from thy careful sign mine shall not be banished out. Apply to bring this to effect. Call home thy wits again, and all thy wily fetches far each artificial train. 
This is the perfect fruit that may to thee of mischief spring, to presuppose that mischief is not graft in anything. Scant have I opportunity for my pretenced guile, because we are me trusted so. But try I will the while to set upon them in such sort as none can deem my slight. March forth. Now venture on, fall to both what lieth in thy might, and also what doth pass thy power. O oh, faithful nurse and maid, of all my heavy heart breaking and diverse cursed fate, come, help our simple mean device. Remaining yet I have a robe of Paul, the present that our heavenly grandsire gave, chief monument of Colchis Isle, which Phoebus did bestow on Aetas for a pledge, that him his father he might know. A precious fulgent gorget ache, that bravely glitters bright, and with a seemingly shining seam of golden threads is dyed, through wrought between the row of pearls do stand, stand in borders round, wherewith my golden crispin locks is wanted to be crowned. My little children, they shall bear these presents to the bride, that first with the slipper slubber sauce of shuntsmans shall be tried. The quest the aid of equity in readiness prepare, the lamentable sacrifice upon the bloody air, and force the fierce catching hold upon the rafters high, with crackling noise of flaming sparks rebound in azure sky. No fierce force or rumbling rage of boisterous blustering wind, no dart shot whirling in the skies, such terror to the mind can drive as when the ireful wife doth boil in burning hate, deprived of her spousal bed and comfort of her mate. Nor were the stormy southern wind with darkish dabby face of hoary winter sendeth out the gushing showers apace, where vehement listers, wobbling streams come weltering wal down amain, forbidding both the banks to meet and cannot oft contain. Himself within the channel scope with further breaks his way, nor on us whose rushing streams doth launch into the sea, or when amid the flowering spring with hotter burning sun, the winter's snow dissolves with heat down to the river's run. The clotted top of Hymus hill to water thin doth turn. Such desperate gone in flame is wrath that inwardly doth burn. And modest rule regardeth not our bodies can abide, nor dreading death doth wish on dint of naked blade to slide. Of gods be gracious unto us, for pardon we do crave, that him who tamed the scuffling waves vouchsafed he would be saved. But Neptune, yet the lord of seas, with frowning face will, will lower, that over his second scepter meant to triumph have the power. The boy that rashly doth attempt the great and, and wildly charge of Phoebus everlasting cart, the roving out at large, not bearing in his reckless breast his father's warning wise, was burned with flames which he did scatter in the sky. None knew the costly glimpsing glides, were staggering fay on the road, past not the path, where people safe in former time have trod, of fondling willful wanton boy, do not dissolve the frame of heaven, Sith Jove, with sacred hand hath hallowed the same. Who vowed that valiant oars, though, that were of Argo made, his hath powered naked play on mount to thick on complex compact shade, who entered hath the fleeing rocks and searching out the soil, 
and trying travels of the sea hath on salvage soil knit fast his stretched cable rope and going forth to land to cloy sway the foreign gold with greedy snatching hand unto the seas because that he transgressed their laws divine by this unlucky end of his he pays his forfeit fine the troubled seas of their unrest for vengeance howl and weep Sir, Tri Sir Typhus, who did conquer first the danger of the deep, hath yielded up the cunning rule of his unwildly stern to such a guide as for that useth hath need as yet to learn. And giving up the ghost aloof from his of his native land, in foreign war lies buried vile with dirty sods in sand. He sits among the flittering souls with that strangers to him were. And Alois Isle, that in her mind her master's doth, loss doth bear, bear. Held in ships to stand and wail in crocking narrow hook. The Orpheus Caliph's son, who stayed the running brook while he records on heavily harp the twinkling finger fine, the wind laid down his piping blasts, his harmony divine. Procureth the woods to stir themselves, the trees in trains along came forth with birds that held their lays and listening to his song, with limbs of sunder rent a field of thrace he lieth led dead up to the top of heba flood eke out eke healed was his head gone down to us the stygian damps which seen he had before the and tartar broiling pits from whence return he shall no more a Clydes banging bat did bring the northern lads to ground, and Achloe of sundry shapes he gave his mortal wound. Yet after he could purchase peace both unto sea and land, and after Dibus dungeons black rent upon his outstretched hand, his living spread along himself along of burning Otlis hill, his members in his proper flame, the wretched did thrust he to spill. His blood he brewed with Nestor's blood and lost his loathsome's, loathsome life by traitorous gifts that poison shirt received of his wife. With tusks of bristling Goroyan boar, Sorry, I lost that. A boy, growing boar, a chaos limbs were torn of Meg, Meglea, wicked white, to give to grave by thee were bore. Thy mother's brethren twain, and she, for it with unruthful hand, hath wrought thy doleful destiny to burn that fateful brand. The rash attempting Argonauts deserved all the death. The Hydus whom Aclides lost befit of fading breath. The spring gull which in sousing waves of waters drowned was, go now ye lusty bloods, the seas with doubtful lot to pass. Though idiom had the crackling skill to destinies before the serpent made him leave his life in tomb of Libby's shore the mophus that to other men could well their fates escry who yet only who only did deceive himself uncertain were to die and he that could the secret hap of things to come unfold yet died not in country thebes Dame Theus, husband old, did wander like an outlawed man on Plydemy's sire, did headlong whelm himself in seas who at the Greeks retire. 
from Troy to rush on rocks, did them allure thy with wily light. Stout Ajax, Oilus did sustain the dint of thunder bright. And cruel storm of surging seas, to quite the hellish guilt that by his country was commit in seas he layeth spilt. Ecclesiastes, to redeem her husband Phoebus, Ferris life from death, the godly wife upon her spouse bestowed her panting breath. Proud Pallas, that wretched himself, who bade them first astray the golden fleece that booty brave by ship to fetch away, Perboiled in glowing cauldron hot, with fervent heat he fries, and fleeing piecemeal up and down in water thin he lies. Enough, enough, revenge, O go oh gods, the wrongs of seas. Be good to Jason, doing that he did, his game to please. And we go into Act 4 and the entrance of Nutrix. Uh, Medea will enter later. My shivering mind amazed is, aghast and sore dismayed. My chillish limbs with quaking cold do tremble all afraid. Such plagues and vengeance is at hand. And what exceeding wise do sharp assaults of greedy grief still more and more arise. And of itself in smothering breast enkindles greater heat. Oft have I seen how ramping rage hath forced her to freet. With frantic fits, mad, bedlam wise, against the gods to rail, and eke bewitched ghosts of heaven in plunging plagues to trail. But now Medea beats her busy brain to bring to, pa to pass a mischief greater, greater far than ever any was. A while when hence she tripped away, astonished so sore, and of her poison closet close she entered, had the door. She poureth out her jewels all, abroad to light she brings that which she dreading loathed, loathed along, most irksome ugly things. She mumbling conjures up by means of ills the rabble rout, and hugger mugger crouched long, and hugger mugger couched long, kept close, unsearched out, all pestilent plagues she calls upon. Whatever Libby land in frothy boiling stream doth work, or muddy belching sand, what tearing torments Taurus breeds, with snows unthawed still where winter flaws and hoary frost knit hard the craggy hill, she lays her crossing hands upon each monstrous conjured thing, and over it her magic verse with charming doth she sing. A mosty, rusty, rusty root with cankered scales clad from musty, fusty, dusty dens where lurked along they had. Do crawl a wallowing serpent huge, his cumbrous corpse out drags. In fiery, foaming, blaring mouth, his forked tongue he wags. He stares about with sparkling eyes. If some he might espy, whom snapping at with stinging spit, he might constrain to die. But hearing once the magic verse, he hushed all aghast, his body blown big, wrapped in lumps on Winning knots he cast, no wumbling to and fro his tail in links he rolls it round. Not sharp enough, quoth she, the plagues and tools that hollow ground engenders for my purpose are. To heaven up will I call, to reach me stronger poison down, to frame my feet with all. Now is it at the very point? Medea, thou essay, to bring about some farther fetch than common witches may. 
let down, let down that sprawling snake that doth his body spread, as doth a running brook abroad his mighty channel shed, whose swelling knobs of wondrous life and boisterous bobbing bumps do thump the greater and lesser bear that feet his heavy lumps. The bigger bear with golden gleed the Grekish fleet doth guide, but by the less the Sidon ships their passage have espied, he that with pinch of gripping fist doth bruise the adders twain, his straining hard and clasping hand let him unknit again, and crush their squeezed venom out, come further thou our charm, O slimy serpent python, whom Dame Juno sent to harm Diana, and Apollo both, those heavenly sprites twain with whom Latona traveling did groan with pinching pain. O oh, Hydra, whom in Lerna pool Alcides gave the foil, and all the noisome vermin vile that Heracles did spoil, which when on sunder they were cut with slicing deadly knife, can knit again their sundered parts and so recover life. Help wakeful dragon Argos, whom first magic words of mine made Morpheus lock thy sleepy lids and shut thy sluggering eye. Then having brought above the ground of serpents all the rout of filthy weeds, the rankest bane she picks and gathers out that spring on naughty Eric's hill where passage none is found among the ragged rocks or what on Caucasus his ground doth grow that still is clad in coat of ori mori frost that evermore unmelt abides whose spattered field is soused with gubs of blood that spouted from Prometheus gaping maw, whose guts with twitching talent out the ghastly gripe doth draw, or any other venomous herb among the mighties that grows, that with their sheaf of arrows sharp in field do scare their foes, or with a light held Parthian to serve her turn can send, or else the rich Arabians that dip their arrows end in poison strong, the juice of all Medea out doth ring, that underneath she froze pole and Swabia land doth spring, whose noble state her sinus wood doth high and handsome rear, or what the pleasant soil doth yield in prime of smiling bear. When nature bids the bird bring, when nature bids the bird begin her shrouding nest to build, or when the churlish Boreas blast sharp winter hath exiled, the trim array of branch and bough to clothe the naked tree, and everything with bitter cold of snow congealed be. And any pestilent flower on stalk of any herb doth grow or noisome juice doth lie and rotten writhen roots allow? Hath any force in breading bane, those takes she in her hand. Some plaguy herbs did Athos yield to that mount of Thessaly land, and other Pindus rouches high and some upon the top of Pingaeus, but tender twigs the cruel scythe did lock. These Tigris river nourisheth up, these Tigris river nourished up that chokes his whirlpool deep with stronger stream. Danubius, those in fostering wave did keep, those did Hadaspus minister, who by the parching zone with lukewarm silver channel runs, so rich with precious stone, and Bethia's son who gave the name upon his country great, and with his shallow ford against the Spanish seas doth beat this herb abode, the edge of knife and dawning of the day, ere Phoebus' face can peep. 
bedecked with glittering golden spray, his slender stalk was snipped off in the deep of silent night. His corn was cropped, while she with charm her poisoned nails did dight. She chops the deadly herbs and wrings the squeeze cluttered blood of serpents out and filthy birds of irksome miry mud. She tempers with the same an ape. She brays the heart of owl foreshadowing death with glaring eyes and mopping visage foul. Of shrike owl horse alive, she takes the dirty stinking guts. All these the framer of this feat in diverse parcels puts. This hath in it devouring force of greedy spoiling flame. The frozen icy doling cold in danger. The frozen icy doling cold engenders by the same. She chants on those the magic verse. The works no lesser harm. Bustling frantically, she stamps and ceaseth not to charm. Oh, flittering flocks of grisly ghosts that sit in silent seat. Oh, ugsome bugs, oh, goblin scream of hell, I you entreat. Oh, lowering chaos dungeon blind and dreadful darkened pit, where deities muffled up in clouds of blackest shades doth sit. Oh, wretched, woeful, wailing souls, your aid I do implore, that linked lie with the jingling chains on wailing limbo shore. Oh, mossy den, where death doth couch his ghastly carrion face, release your pangs. O oh, sprite, and to this wedding high apace, cause ye this nagging will to pause that rents the carcass bound, permit Ixen's racked limbs to rest upon the ground. Let hungry bitten Tantalus with gaunt and pined porch soup up Pyrenees gulped stream, his swelling thirst to staunch. Let burning Creon bide the brunt and girds of greater pain. Let pace of slippery sliding stone type over back again. His moiling father Sisyphus among the craggy rocks. Your daughters died of Danus, whom pierced pitchers mocks. Oh, soft with labor lost in vain, this day doth long for you that in your life with bloody blade at once your husband slew. And thou, whose hairs I honored have, O oh, torch and lamp of night, approach, O oh, lady mine, with the most deformed visage dight. O oh, threefold shape and name that knittest more threatening brows than one, according to the country guise with dangling locks undone and naked foot, the secret grove about I hollowed have. From dusky dry and mosty clouds the showers of rain I crave. Through me, the chinked gaping ground, the socket seas hath drunk, and main a stream of the ocean flood beneath the earth is sunk this wealth of. Out through hollow gulf with stronger gushing rage. Then, where is suddy wumbling waves, whose power it doth assuage the heavens with wrong disturbed course and out of order quite. The darkened sun, and glimmering stars at once hath showed the light, and drenched Charles, his struggling wain hath ducked in dashing wave, the framed course of Roman time racked out of frame I have. So my enchantments have it wrought, that when the flaming sun in summer bakes the parched soil that hath the twigs begun, with spouting blossom fresh to bloom, and hasty winter corn hath out of harvest seen the fruit to barns on sudden born. Into a shallow ford is stored the stream hath faces washed, and Easter's channel being in so many branches cast, abated hath his wakeful waves. On every silent shore he lieth calm. The tumbled floods with thundering noise did roar. When couched close the winds were not moving, pippling soft, 
with working wave the prancing seas have swollen and leapt aloft, whereas the wood in older time with thick and branched board did spread his shade on gladsome soil, no shade remaineth now. I, rolling up the magic verse and noontime Phoebus stay, amid the darkened sky, when the flood was light of drowsy day, echo at my charm, the watery flocks of Hayats went to glade. Time is it, Phoebe, to respect the service to thee made. To thee, with cruel bloody hands, these garlands green were twained, which with his folding circles nine, the serpents rough did bind. Have here Tifa's flesh that doth in Etna's furnace groan, that shook with buttery violent kings Jove assaulted throne. This is the central's poison blood, which Nessus vile, villain vile, who made a rape of Denary, intending her to file, bequeatheth her, when newly wounded he gasping lay for breath, while Hercules shaft stuck in his ribs, whose lands did work his death. Behold the funeral cinders here, which up the poison dried of Hercules, who in his fire on Eta mountain died. Lo, here the fatal brand, which late the fatal sisters three conspired of Melager's birth. Such should his destiny be, to save alive his breathing corpse, while that might whole remain, which save his mother Althe kept, till he, his uncle's twain, that from Atlanta would have had the head of conquered boar, had reft of life whose spiteful death Althas took so sore, that both she showed her fervent, ferventness in sister's godly love, when to revenge her brother's death, me and nature did her move, but yet as mother most unkind, of nature most unmild, to hasten the untimely grave of her beloved child, while Melagus, fatal brand she wasted in the flame, whose swelting guts and bowels mold consume as the same, these plumes, the harpies, ravening fowls for haste did leave behind, in hidden hall whose claws access no mortal white can find. When fast from Zethis chasing them with speedy flight they fled, put unto these the feathers which the stillman bird did shed, whom dusking Phoebus dimmed light for Hercules did sting, and gold with a shaft that he in Hydra's hide did fling. You, Ares, you, Ares, have yield a clattering noise I know, I know of old. How unto me my oracles are wanted to be told, that when ye tremble flower doth shake, then hath my goddess great, vouchsafe to grant me my request as I did her entreat. I see Diana's wagon shift, not that whereon she glides, when all the night in darkened sky with face full ope she rides, with countenance bright and blandishing, but when with heavy cheer, with dusky, shimmering, wanny globe, her lamp doth pale appear. Oh, when she trots about the heavens with horse head reined straight, when Tessel witches with the threats of charming her do bait, so, with thy dumpish dulled blaze, thy cloudy fainting light, send out, amid the lowering sky, the heart of people's might, with agonies of sudden dread, in stranger fearful wise, compel the precious brazen pens with jarring noise to rise through Corinth, country, everywhere, to shield thee from this arm, lest headlong drawn thou be from heaven to earth by force of charm. On a holy solemn sacrifice to worship thee we make, imbrued with a bloody turfy the kindled torch doth take thy sacred burning night fire at the dumpish moory grave. So charged with thy troubled ghost may head I shaken have and ducking down my neck allow, with shrieking loud, have strite, 
and groveling flat on the floor in trance have lied in dead men's plight my ruffled locks about mine ears down dangling have been bound tucked up about about my temples twain with gladsome garland crowned a dread branch is offered thee from filthy stygis flood as is the guise of bacchus priest of corimbanthus wood with naked breast and dugs laid out i'll prick with sacred blade mine arm that for the bubbling blood an issue may be made with thrilling streams my purple blood let drop on the altar stones my tender children's crushed flesh and broken bruised bones learn how to brook with hardened heart in practice put the trade to flourish fears and keep a coil with naked glittering blade i sprinkled holy water have the loans once been made if tired thou complains that my cries thee overlaid give pardon to my earnest suit oh purse's sister dear still jason is the only cause that urgeth me to rear with squeaking voice thy noisome beans that sting like shot of bow to season thou those saucy robes to work crazes woe wherewith when she shall prank herself the poison by and by to rot her inward merry out within her bones may fry the secret fire blares their eyes with gloss of yellow gold the which prometheus gave to me that fire filter bold on whom for robbery that he did in heavens above commit with massy pace with great caucasus on willed hill doth sit where under with un unwasted womb he lies and pays his pain to feed the crumbing fowl with gubs of guts that grows again he thought me with a pretty slate of cunning how to hide the strength of fire close kept in that may be espied this livery tinder mulsiver hath forged for my sake that tempered with his brimstone quick at first touch and take like of my cousin feet on a wildfire flake i have his flames the monstrous staggered wrath chimera to me gave in head and breast a lion grim and from the rump behind he sweeps the flower with lagging tail of serpent fierce be kind in ribs and loys along with punches in the shape of a goat those fumes that out the bulb are breaked from fiery spewing throat, I gotten have and braided with Medusa's bitter gall, commanding it in secret sort to dusk and cover all. Breath on the or breathe, breath on this venom's hecate with deadly might inspire, preserve the touching polder of my secret covered fire. O oh, grant that these my cloaked crafts so may bewitch their eyes, that likelihood of treason none they may be are herein surmise. So work that they in handling it may feel no kind of heat, her stewing breast, her seething veins, let fervent fire freed and force her roasted pining limbs to drop and melt away let smoke her rotten broiling bones and flame that is bright today to cast a light with a greater gleed on frizzled blazing here then is the shining flame that does the wedding torches bear my suit is hard tries hecate a dreadful barking gave from doleful cloud the sacred flesh of flamy sparks she drave each poison pride fulfilled is call forth my children dear by whom unto the cursed bride these presents you may bear go forth go forth my little babes your mother's cursed fruit go go employ your pains with bribe and earnest humble suit to purchase grace and act to earn your favor in her sight that both a mother is to you and rules with ladies might go on apply your charge apace and hie you home again that with embracing you i may my last farewell attain what sharp assaults of cruel cupid's flame with giddy head thus tosseth to and fro, 
This bidden white, this devilish desperate dame, what roving rage had pricks to work this woe? Rough Ranker's vile congeals her frozen face, her haughty breast's bombast is with pride. She shakes her head, she stalks with stately pace. She treats our king more than doth her betide. Who would her deem to be banished white? Whose scarlet cheeks do glow with rosy red, in fainting face with pale and wanny white, the sanguine hue exiled, hence is fled. Her changing looks no colour long can hold, her shifting feet still traverse to and fro, even as a fierce and raving tiger old, that doth unware aware his suckling whelps forego, doth ramp and rage most eager fierce and wood, among the shrubs and bushes that do grow, on Ganges strown that golden sanded flood, whose stream, silver streams through India doth flow. Even so, Madeira sometimes wants her wits to rule the rage of her unbridled ire. Now Venus' son with busy forward fits, now wrath and love enkindled doth both the fire. What shall she do when this will his heinous right with forward foot be packing hence away from Greece to ease our realm of terror quite? And princes twain, whom so, she so sore doth fray, now Phoebus lodged with chariot in the west, let neither reines nor bridle stay thy race. Let groveling light the dulcet night oppressed in cloaking clouds wrapped up in his muscle, muffled face. Let Hesperia, the loathsome of the night, in western flood drench deep the day so bright. Act five, Nuncius Chorus, Nutrix Medea, and later Jason are all on. All things are topsy turvy turned, and wasted cleeds not. To passing great calamity, our kingdom state is brought. The sire and daughter burnt to dust, and blended cinders lie. What train hath trapped them? What train hath them entrapped? Such as are made for kings to die, false, traitorous gifts. What privy guide could wrapped be in those? And I do marvel at this thing in scant. Can I suppose that such a mischief might be wrought by any such device? Report now this destruction and ruin should arise. The fizzing flame most eagerly doth scour with sweeping sway. Each corner of the prince's court, as though it should obey, commanded thereunto so flat on flower the pa palace falls. We are in dread, least further it will take the townish walls. Can cast quenching water on it, then to slake the greedy flame. And this that seemeth very strange do happen in the same. The water feeds the fire fast, the more that we do toil it to suppress. With hotter rage, the heat begins to boil. Those things that we have gotten for our help, it doth enjoy. Medea, thou that doest so sore King Pelops' land annoy, twine hence in haste thy forward foot, that all assays depart to any other kind of coast. Find it in my heart to shun this land. If hence I had first fallen away by flight, I would have travelled back again to gaze at such a sight. To stand and see this wedding new, why? Says thou dost in mind? Apply, apply thy sore attempt that good success dost find. What great exploit is this that thou of vengeance doth enjoy? Still art thou blended witless wench with a veil of Venus boy? Is this suffocance for the grief? Is root of rancor dead if Jason led a single life in solitary bed? 
Some nettling, thorny, stinging plagues unpracticed devise. Prepare thyself in readiness and fall to on this wise. Let all be fish that comes to net. Have no respect of right. From mind on mischief fixed fast, let shame be banished quite. The vengeance they receive at my little children hand is nothing worth. In earnest, I attentive must thou stand. When heat of wrath, wrath begins to call, to cool, cheer up thyself again. Raise up those touches of old that wanted were in thee to reign, that buried deep in breast to lie, and as for all the same that yet is wrought, of godliness let it usurp the name. Do this, and I shall teach them learn what trifling cast it was, and common practised film flam trick that erst I brought to pass. By this my rigid melody a preamble hath made, to show what haggier heaps of harm shall, shall shortly them invade, what durst my rude unskilful hand assay that was of weight. What could the malice of a girl invent her foes to bait? Still conversant with wicked feats, Medea, am I made. My blunt and old brains have so been beat about this trade. Oh, so I joy, I joy, that I smote off my brother's head and slushed his members off. Ache that from parents' head I fled and filched to have the privy fleece, low mass that sacred was. It glads my heart that I, to bring old Peleus' death to pass, have set his daughters on all on work. O oh, grief prick out away, not any guilt thou shalt with unacquainted hand assay against whom wrath intendest thou to bend thine eyeful might. Or oh, with what weapon dost thou mean thy traitorous foes to smite? I know not what my wrathful mind consulted hath within, and to be raid to myself I dare not yet begin. O oh, rush and unadvised fool, I make to hasty speed, oh, that my foe had gotten of this harlot's body seed. But whatsoever thou by him enjoyest, suppose the same to be Croesus' babes. Of them let her enjoy the name, this vengeance. This doth like me well good reason is there. Why? The last attempt of ills thou must with stomach stout apply. Alas, ye little silly fools have erst my children were the plague price of fathers faults to meet yourselves to bear. Oh, horror huge with sudden stroke my heart doth overcome. With icy dulling cold congealed my members are all benumbed. My shivering limbs appalled, sore for ghastly fear to quake, and banished rage of malice hot begins itself to slake. The hateful heart of wife against her spouse hath will yielded place, and piteous mother's mercy mild restoreth nature's face. Or shall I shed their guiltless blood? Shall I? The frame unfold of that which loving nature's hand hath wrought in me her mould. O oh, doting fury, change thy mind. Conceive a better thought. Let not this heinous savage deed by means of me be wrought. What crime have they, poor fools, commit, for which they should abide? Upon their father Jason right all blot, all blame should lie. Medea, yet their mother, I am worser far than him. Tush, let them frankly go to rack nor kith nor kin to me. They are, dispatch them out of hand. Hold, hold, my babes, they be, got what? Most harmless lambs they are. No crime, no fault have they. Alas, they be mere innocents. I do not this deny. So was my brother whom I slew. Oh, false revolt in mind. Why dost thou staggering to and fro such change of fences find? Why is my face besprent with tears? What makes me falter so? That wrath and love with striving thoughts do lead me to and fro. Such fighting fences, bickering storms, my swerving mind deter. As when between the wrestling winds is raised the wrangling war. 
each where the tumbling wallowing waves are hoist and reared high am amid the jostling swolves of seas that hot in fury fry even so my heart with struggling thoughts now sinks now swells amain wrath sometimes chases virtue and virtue wrath again oh yield thee yield a grisling grief to virtue yield thy place Thou only comfort of our stock in this afflicted case. Come hither. Come, dear loved imp, with coil in me embrace. While that by me, your mother dear, sweet boys, you are enjoyed. So long, God, grant your father may you keep from harm uncloyed. Exile and flight approach on me, and they shall by and by be pulled perforce out of mine arms with favored weeping eye, so languishing, languishing with mourning heart, yet let them go to grave before their father's face, as they before their mothers have. Now rancorous grief with fiery fits begins to boil again, that quelch calls of deadly hate do fresher force attain. The rusty rancor, harbored long within my conquered breast, starts up and stirs my hand anew in mischief to be pressed. Oh, that the rubblement of brats which swarmed about the side of Niobe, that scornful dame who perished by her pride, had taken life out of his limb. Oh, that the fates of heaven, a fruitful mother, had me made of children seven and seven. My barren womb for my revenge have yielded little store. Yet, for my sire and brother, twain I have, there needs no more. Whom seek this ruffling rout of fiends with gargle visage dight? Where will they deal their stripes? Or whom with whips of fire smite? Or whom with cruel scorching brand of stygian faggot fell, with mischief great to cloy intends this army? black of hell, a chopping udder again to hiss with writhing wrapped round, as soon as did the lushing whip flirt out of the yerking sound, whom, bumping, with thy rapping post, Megura, wilt thou crush, whose ghost doth here mishapped from hell with scattered members rush, my slaughtered brother's ghost it is that vengeance comes, comes to crave, According to his dire request, due vengeance shall he have. But flap thou fierce, the firebrands full dashed in mine eyes. Dig, rent, scrape, burn, and squeeze them out. Lo, open my breast it lies. To fight in furious bobbing strokes. Oh, brother, brother, bid these royals that press to worry me themselves a way to rid. Down to the silent souls, alone, not taking any care. Let me be left here by myself alone, and do not spare to bust and copper clothe these arms that drew the bloody blade to quench the furies of their spite that does to me invade. With this right hand, the sacrifice on the altar, altar shall be made. What means this sudden trampling noise? A band of men in arms comes busting towards us that me will cloy with deadly harms. To end this lotus set upon, I will myself convey up to the garrets of the house. Come, nurse, with me away. Bestow thy body hence with me from danger of thy our foes. Now does my mind on mischief set thou must thyself dispose. Let not the flickering flame and praise in darkness be exile of stomach pout that you did use in murdering of thy child, proclaiming people's ears the praise of cruel, bloody hand. If any faithful man here be, whom ruin of this land and slaughter of his prince do cause in pensive heart to bleed, step forth that ye may take the wretch that wrought this deadly deed. Here, here, ye jolly champions, lay load with weapons here. Have now hoist up this house from low foundation up it rear. Now, now my sceptre guilt I have recovered once again. My father's wrongs revenged are, and ache my brother's lane. The golden scuttle's fleece return is to my native land. Possession of my realm I have reclaimed to my hand. Come home is my virginity, that will whom went astray. Oh, 
God, as good as I could wish, O joyful wedding day, go shroud thyself in darkness dim. Dispatched I have this feet, yet vengeance is not done enough to cool our thirsty heat. O soul, why dost thou make delay? Why dost thou doubt instead? Go forward with it, yet thou mayest, while doing is thy hand. The wrath that might should minister doth qualify his flame. The pricks of sorrow twitched my heart attain with blushing shame. Through rigor of thy heinous go, O oh, wretch. What hast thou done? Though I repent a caitiff vile, a caitiff vile I am, to slee and my son. Alas, I have committed importunate delight, still egged on my forward mind that did against it fight, and lo, the vain contact of this delight increaseth still. This only is the thing that wants unto my wicked will that Jason's eyes should see this sight as yet I do suppose. Nothing it is that I have done. My travel, all I lose, that I employed in diary deeds unless ye see the same. Lo, here she looketh out, and leans upon the house's frame, that pitch long hangs with falling sway. Here heap your fires fast, whereby the flames that she herself enkindled may her waste. Go, Jason. Go, the orbit writes the winning sheet engrave, make ready for thy son, as last beloved him to have. Thy spouse and ache thy father-in-law are uh, that are uh, entombed by me, received hath the duties that to the man, dead man ghosts agree. This child hath felt the deadly stroke and loans of fatal knife, and this with willsome murder like shall lose her tender life. By all the sacred gods of heaven, and by thy oft exile and spousal bed, which breach of love in me did not defile, now spare and save the life of him, my child, and also thine. Whatever crime committed is, I grant it to be mine. Make me a bloody sacrifice to due deserved death. Take from my guilty, sinful, guilty head the use of vital breath. Nay, sith thou wilt not have it so as grieves thy pinched mind, here wait to wreck my vengeance fell, my burning blade shall find. Avaunt now, hence thou peasant proud employ thy busy pain to reap the fruits of virgins bed and cast them off again when mothers they are made let one for due revenge suffice if greedy thirst of hungry hens that still for vengeance cries might quenched be with blood of one then ask i none at all and yet to staunch my hungry grief the number is too small if only twain i slay if pledge of love lies secret mind, my bowel I'll unrest and search my womb with poking blade. Now finish out thy deadly deed that enterprise it is. No more entreatance will I use, yet only grant me this. Delay a while his doleful death, that I may take my flight, lest that thine eyes with bleeding heart should view that heavy sight. Yet linger eager anguish yet to slay this child of thine. Run not! Too hard, too rush with hasty speed. This doleful day is mine. The time that we obtained have of Creon we enjoy. O oh, vile, malicious minded wretch, my loathsome life destroy. In craving these thou speak'st, that I should show thee some relief. Well, good enough. All this is done. O oh, ruthful, giddy grief. This is the only sacrifice that I can thee provide. Unthankful Jason, hither cast thy coyish looks aside. Lo, here dost thou beloved, uh, lo, here dost thou behold thy wife. Thus every wanted eye, when murder I had made to scrape my way, doth open lie that I may spring into the skies. The flying serpents twain submitted have their scaly, scaly necks to yoke of rattling wain. Thou, father, have thy sons again. I, in the wandering sky, in nimble will the wagon swifter will ride advanced high. Go through the ample spaces wide, infect the poisoned air. Bear witness, grace of God is none in place of thy repair. And it ends. 
So, yeah, we were just debating in the chat as to uh, precisely the logistics of that closing moment. Um, so it seems she goes into the house and is um, from 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 a height there, uh, threatening the, uh, the second child. Um, there isn't a particularly clear indicator precisely as to the moment of 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 that that child's and and how that how that resolves itself it's sort of texturally a bit ambiguous i wasn't quite sure when things were supposed to happen there um though other versions might tell us more clearly um so that we can intimate that but yeah a lot of words a lot of words there i mean that was a lot of madea i mean it's a one woman show isn't it with some people Feed, doing some feed cues and occasionally, you know, filling us in with other stuff. Um, I almost feel that actually everybody else should be played by one person with different masks on, like they're just just wandering around, and 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 it's just uh, that this is this is after the fact, and and it's just all of all, all the recollections of coming coming around there. There's 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 something in that that I quite I quite like. Uh, I, I it's very difficult. I, I was saying in the, I was saying in the chat as well that. I, I, because I know the Euripides ver version better, I, I, I'm, I, I was getting at the end very confused what was going on because I was expecting a slightly different route to the ending. Uh, so I, I, I was going, hang on. Uh, oh, no, they're not. Oh, right. Oh, no, it's doing a different thing. That's that's my problem, not Seneca's um, necessarily. Uh, right. We're very over time, as it were. Uh, th thoughts from the room? Who wants to leap in? Um, if you need to rush off, leap in first. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, are you waving? Uh, I mean, Seneca's Medea is so um, different than Euripides' Medea or um, uh, even Apollonius' Medea. Like, she's, uh, I don't know if this is the way I'm interpreting it, like, but the ending seems in this, like, she goes off to back to Apollo or something like that, or she leaves or she kills herself. But if she's just going off to Apollo, it's almost like she's like a, a witch. You know, she's doing magic in this. And I don't remember that in other versions of the story. Mm. There's, the, there's that whole extended, you know, magical sequence of conjuring and, and stuff, which is, you know, really, yeah, it's, it's, there's some intense stuff going on. Sort of first described and then, then again, and it's sort of, because uh, what, what the, Nutrix is doing before that that sequence as well. So, yeah, Act Four is all country. It's it's a bit like when we were doing um, Oedipus the other day, and the you know the the the, the prophesying is done live on stage um, with with you know sacrifice sacrificing animals and things. Um, so it seems to be something Seneca was into. Um, yeah, um, I, yeah, I, and I found bits of it I was really enjoying. I mean, fourteeners are always technically difficult to uh, to work with. Um, every so often, the, the the author's sort of striving slightly too much for effect. Sometimes the alliteration works and really clicks, and sometimes it it gets a little heavy-handed. Um, but you know, there's still something there. I still think with all of these Seneca uh, tragedies, actually, with with a, with an edit and a uh, and a polish, there there is something there, even if it's a relatively niche market. I def I definitely think that there is uh, there is. Uh, there is some mileage to, to this. Uh, other thoughts? Valentina, you had a lot to say. I don't know if you, you have any voice left. I think I spoke too much today. Yeah. Right? Um, no, I would, that's what I was thinking. It's just like, it would be a great, like, smaller theatre, kind of like, not not necessarily fringe, but like, like black box kind of, mm. with a little bit of editing. One woman show with people, potentially with one person coming in, do the other characters. Or even with videos coming in and do the other characters. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think there's, there's certainly, obviously, you know, the character of Madeira is, you know, has has definitely got legs. You know, I think that's that's not an unknown thing. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. no, but it's quite clear. Like in, in respect to the last Seneca, I was in for. It's quite clear, apart from maybe the last bit because she she changes her mind so many times at a certain point. I, I was confused as well, but. Um, yeah, it's quite it's 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 translated in a way that is quite clear to understand and follow. I hope. Mm. Yeah, I mean that, that that actually that final speech is really nice. I mean, once you unpack it, I think that's one with rehearsal that actually that's got the most potential because it's this this sort of conversation uh, that's going flitting around, and you're not quite sure how 
You know, that's one of the reasons why we weren't quite sure how many children were dead, because she saw, is she talking to an alive child or is she talking to a corpse? Because you know what? They, both are possible. Um, uh, and so, yeah, that was that was that was really tricky. But um, yeah. And that whole thing about having an audience, you know, the, 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 some, I think Eric said in the chat, you know, she, she wants to, to go somewhere so that she can leave. Uh, you know, she wants to make that appearance and, you know, uh, and, and uh, you know, make that impact. It's all about impact uh, in, in places. Uh, Eric. Well, also, if you think about it, it's kind of very public. I mean, considering that, like, sort of it's meant to be in front of a band of soldiers or whatever the chorus is meant to be in this. Um, as well as the, well, technically Corinthian women, um, Medea doesn't really have a moment to herself on stage. It's not like, you know, sort of the usual neoclassical tragedies where you have like sort of a moment to yourself where you tell the truth kind of thing. And it's just uh, sort of all public versus private or private dragged out into the public quite literally. So it's kind of just quite interesting. And it's actually one of my favorite Euripides plays, which makes me quite disturbing, I know. But <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no, no, we can we we can like tragedy. It's fine. Um, yeah, and and you know there are though those moments when you know she's talking to Jason, and you're just going this this a lot of sarcasm dripping out of that. Um, you know, and the kind of sarcasm you don't ex quite expect from from this kind of text. Um, you know, just going oh no, I'm packing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, look at me pack. Uh, kind of stuff. <laughs> it's just. And, and say that it's the, it's the odd sometimes the phrasing sort of just just you hit words or things there's some really interesting word choices some of which i say really land and sometimes you know if, you know when you hit flim flam and you're sort of going it's yeah it's just it's it's um yeah uh tom do you have any 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 thoughts on this cheerful happy tale of, of happy folk i just thought the the idea of boiling it down to to the one woman show type of thing would be um yeah potent um mm. and yeah the as you say the the language was was fabulous but um could get up its own backside sometimes i thought well, you had the, the the hardest task in a sense because you had the chorus and the chorus. Actually, I quite liked the chorus altered by the translator. I actually, for once, I'm going. I, I think the translator did quite a nice job with that one, that first chorus. But a lot of the choruses, I wasn't. A, I'm, I'm never a huge fan of the chorus. Everyone knows this. Um, but I, I wasn't sure really what they added to a text like this at all. Actually, um, you know, the, the, especially as they're quite judgy at times as well. They're sort of going, you know. Well, you know, let's let's the story play out. Um, so, um, yeah, they would they would they would they were the harder parts I I found for me. Um, any other thoughts from the room before we close the session? Um, I always hate to give Seneca because so much of a short shrift of uh, of, of this process. But to say, um, one day, I'm sure we'll come back. Um, but uh, till then, uh, all that remains is to thank all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading. Thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye, gnashing, munching mouths. <laughs>